here it is, another episode of Marketing Management and Money with your hosts, Ryan Murray and Ryan Owens. Today, we're going to be looking at branding for your small business and how you could be successful in it. And we're going to be namely looking at two key factors in branding, what I like to refer to as consistency and frequency. Now, before we jump into kind of the the meat here of what we're going to talk about, I kind of want to uh, kick it off a little bit with some typical, you know, stereotypical preconceived notions that I'll see a lot of businesses have. Sure. You get these entrepreneurs, these small businesses that they come to the table and they're like branding is, it's a little bit elusive. It's yeah. something that it's like, yeah. oh yeah, well, I mean, established companies, they, they do the branding side of things and, uh, you know, and, and they almost look at it like this pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that it's like, well, we could chase that, but we'll never catch it. And yeah, it's something reserved for big companies like Amazon and Google and Home Depot. And now, now, now now, technically I always say that small businesses, they don't have a brand, they have a reputation, Um, but your, your, your reputation is your brand. And, you know, um, honestly, you've kind of opened my eyes to some of the importance of not only having that quality reputation, but backing it up with, you know, your uh, like your your logo, your color scheme, the the messaging that you use, the uh, the you know, the timing like there there are all these little pieces. And again, to not make it seem so elusive it's actually just, uh, it, it, it's very process oriented. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. just step by step by step by step, you know, do do these things. Y- y- you start, you take a shower, then you dry <laughs> off, then you get dressed. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I see these small businesses that are just like, okay, so wait a second. Like I dry off, then I get dressed, then I take a shower. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like it, it matters how you do it. And once you, once you dial it in, it really is as easy as, you know, just getting ready in the yeah. morning. Step and, one, step two, step three. And that's that sure. con- consistency and frequency. Like yeah. how, how often do you bathe? Uh, daily. How yeah. often do you brush your teeth? A couple times a day, you know? <laughs> exactly. And the key here is that it's really not as complicated as the internet, social media, whatever you're looking at makes it seem. All these 12 step guides to branding and mm-hmm. this white paper for your email address. And we'll tell you how to knock out branding. It's like, no, you don't need any of that. You as your own small business, your entrepreneurship, whatever you're into, you know how to do it. And all it is, is taking the time to understand your customer base and then delivering your brand to them both frequently and in a consistent way. Right? So when we talk about consistency, we're talking about that you take the same message to them, essentially what your brand is, what you're all about. You know, a lot of people talk about like a, uh, a vision statement or a mission statement or, you know, whatever your company culture is, these kinds of things. It's <laughs> delivering that, that same message over and over and over again, right? If, if I were to come to you, at, or, or I'm sorry, okay, so you, I have a small business, right? And you as a listener or you, Ryan, as, as, as a consumer of, whatever goods or services that I offer, you come to my store. Uh So I have this store you walk in and you're like, Hey, you had a really cool sign out front. And I'm like, yeah, welcome to our juice shop. We are here to, you know, help you be healthy and active in your life. And you're like, cool. That's definitely like, I'm thirsty. It's a hot day out. And I'm like, sweet. So we really like to get the cheapest labor that we possibly can. And we, and we help you to make your own juice. And you're like, what? (laughs) And you're like, yeah, you could grow your own stuff to make your own juice. And you're like, Oh, that's not what I I just want to drink. You're like, yeah, we'll give you a drink. You could see how that starts to get confusing. And I I get that this is kind of a ridiculous example, but I can't tell you how many times I've come across businesses that do this constantly. They deliver message after message after message. And every one of them is different. They're talking about a completely different thing. And that confuses your customers. And like we always say on this show, you confuse your customers, you lose, you introduce confusion, you lose Mm -hmm. end of story, right? Mm -hmm. You lose sales, you lose customers, you lose profit, you lose market share, all these things. Right. And so being consistent in the message that you deliver is crucial to branding. That's why it's one of two things on this list. It's absolutely imperative that you figure out what your message is and you nail it. That same message every time. So I, uh, 
I do a lot of uh, trainings, public speaking, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you're talking about the consistency, one of the things that helps me as I am out there speaking is the fact that, and, and I've had people tell me this, uh, you know, I've got one organization that they actually contract with me, uh, you know, at least a couple times a year, they'll have me come out and do various trainings. And, and I asked them once, I said, Hey, you know what? I love this, but <laughs> yeah, do, of you, course. <laughs> do, do you want, you know, do, do, do you need to add a little bit more variety? Uh, you know, are people getting a little bit tired of, of me, being the one who's always, you know, coming and presenting. And, and the response that they, that they gave me is they said, we hire you because we know that you can deliver. Yeah. And, you know, as I have had to put on different events, you know, uh, I've organized a lot of, uh, you know, a launch, a lot of uh, like entrepreneurial series and, you know, these, these breakout sessions. And it's always this crapshoot yeah. where you're like, okay, is this guy going to be any good or is he going to be yeah. terrible? And so as you're talking about consistency, that's that's what my mind goes to. As I think about all the times where I'm going to hear someone, and this is the same thing if you, you know, like stand-up comedy, sure. where it's like, okay, is this guy going to be funny or is he not going to be? And you want to go to the places that you know consistently are going to be funny. You yeah. know, if you go to any type of performance, you want to go to the place that's consistently going to perform. Uh, you know, I mean, if you go and like do sports, uh, you know, sporting events, you want to see the team that's consistently out there playing well. You don't want to see someone who like gets lucky and then botches the rest of the season. Right. But that's kind of what's happening in the business is like, oh, dude, we nailed our marketing that one time. Yeah. Like, and that happens a lot with social media. People get a little bit lucky. They, you know, they hit on something, the the right thing at the right time, but they have no idea how to replicate that because yeah. they, they basically got lucky. And you can kind of see it. It's like, oh, okay, you had this huge old spike, and then you did nothing yeah. after that. And your right. marketing just kind of went... Blah, 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 you yeah, know? exactly. And in my opinion, it's better off to you know not have that spike and you know just consistently moving in the right direction. Because if you have a huge up and then a huge down... Customers don't like it. You know, that's that's too erratic it for them. It builds a lot of distrust. Yes. Right? And so ultimately what you're talking about, and I love, I love, love, love that you brought this up because you're talking about familiarity, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking about that level of trust, that uh, trust factor of I'm going to go here expecting one thing and I'm going to get what I asked for. What yes. delivered, what what is delivered to me is what I expected, mm -hmm. right? And Consumers, customers are drawn to that. And so if you can consistently deliver that message over and over and over, your customer base will trust you and your customer base will grow it. People are drawn to that, right? Mm -hmm. In the exact same way that whether, you know, like you said, you, you've you organized these events or or this, this customer that you consistently uh, train with, they come to you because they're familiar. They know what they're going to get. They like it. And so they're going to go back, right? So we go back to... You know, Jared kept going back to Subway to lose weight because he's like, hey, it tastes good and I like it. And so, and I'm losing weight. So it's over and over and over again. It's the same thing. There's this, uh, there's this little uh, diner in downtown LA. It's called The Pantry. And uh, it opened in like the 1920s. It's 24-7, uh, 365, never closes. And their big claim to fame is they've never been without a customer. Nice. Like they've always had a customer in their diner since, you know, since they opened in the 1920s. And I'm like, that's a pretty, pretty impressive claim to fame, right? Like and never been empty. Never been empty. Yeah. Wow. And, that's and, incredible. Yeah. And so, I mean, this is going on now. Now, technically I haven't been there for several years. And so I believe that they're still hold. I don't, I got to find out what uh, the whole pandemic did to that. Ooh. That would be interesting. Yeah, I'll, for sure. I'll look it up because it's been a couple of years since I've uh, been in the uh, downtown LA area. But anyway, so they, uh, they've never been without a customer, right? And when you go in there, it feels like you step back in time. And that's what's so cool about it. And the menu is basically the same stupid menu that they've had forever. And they're not changing anything. But I, I think about this, like if I go in there and, you know, like I'm kind of a sucker for a good Reuben. Yeah. And, you know, uh, they make their own uh, sourdough. I guess you do Reuben on rye. But, uh, but like if I go in there... And I'm having, you know, this Reuben and all of a sudden they're like messing with it. I don't like it. 
Like I go there because I want the same Reuben. Like that's, that's what I expect to get. And your customers, it's very much the same thing is when yeah. they see a sales flyer that you put out, they expect to see the same stuff. And so if you're changing it to on them too quickly, then all of a sudden they're just like, Oh, what just happened? And, mm-hmm. and I'll see, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Government agencies are notorious oh, for geez. changing their logo like mm-hmm. every three years. Yeah. <laughs> and you never know what they're called. Right. You, you go to show up and you're like, uh, yeah, I just need to contact. I, it's it's the Office of Engagement and Performance of success. Yeah. I mean, and then success they make like some assistance center. <laughs> they make like some acronym of it. Yeah. And, and it's constantly changing, constantly changing as like, Oh, we're rebranding ourselves again. And I look at that. And I'm like, why, why, you know, it, it, just stick with something that works, build yeah. on that. Don't, right. you know, don't always burn the house down. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and I want to be clear about something here. So when we, when we talk about this consistency, right, we're talking about elements of your business that are core to who you are as a business. So your logo, your colors, your, your culture, you know, the why you exist and what you deliver as a company, those things shouldn't be changing all the time. They shouldn't mm. rapid fire change just because you got a new sales manager or just because you got a new marketing guy or you had a new employee come in with some great ideas. Like you don't always want to be changing those things. Now, I mean, and good examples of this are you look at, you look at some of the big players as a reference point for some of these, right? Like you look at how often has Coca-Cola's logo changed? How often Google's logo has changed? How often Home Depot's logo has changed? It, it just, it's rare. And if they do, the, the modifications are subtle. I remember when uh, Starbucks, they had a logo change. They had a really, like, it was this big to do, right? Because Starbucks was changing their logo. And if you look at the difference between uh, before it was changed and after it was changed, a lot of people didn't even notice. Mm-hmm. It was so subtle, but yet it was so crucial to their brand, right? And And the reason why they changed those is because they felt that that changing their logo, even though it was super subtle, brought their logo more in line with who they were and why they existed as a brand, right? And so if we're going to change those core things, it's got to be on that front of you. It's, it's got to draw nearer and closer to who you are and why you exist. Right. Right. And so that, but that doesn't mean that you can't go changing you know, the bullet points on your, on your sales flyer, right? You can absolutely, you know, recraft some of your messaging a little bit, but the general layout of a sales flyer should be something very familiar to your customer, Mm -hmm. right? It should be something they're familiar with. So they're comfortable with it. So they want to come back. Mm -hmm. It's, it's that building that trust with your customer, right? Yeah. And in even people who aren't your customer, even if these are prospective customers, having several touch points that are the same, again, builds consistency. Think about it as if you like, you went in, say you're going to, to buy a computer, right? And you walk into your local, I don't even know if this is a thing anymore. <laughs> I'm getting old, man. <laughs> oh yeah. Super old. <laughs> okay. I mean, so those thirties okay, are killing go. you. Yeah, right. I know. So, I, man, I'm like reflecting back on like the oh, ni- 90s, 90s, early 2000s, like PC type, not Apple. I'm not <sighs> talking about Apple. I'm talking about like PC ads here when it's like, come down to awesome PC for your, you know. You're killing me. I know, here. dude. I'm old. <laughs> no, you're not. I know. So, so, so with all your wisdom, what, what exactly yeah. are you wanting with so? That? Uh, so, okay. So you walk into like a Best Buy, right? Okay. Or somewhere wherever they sell computers and you walk in and you have this experience with your, your Best Buy store associate and you're like, yeah, I I really like this model. I'm going to go find out some more information about it. And you know, maybe I'll swing back in and pick it up. So then you go out and you 
decide you're going to look up that, that brand online. Right. And so you look it up and at first when you pull up the page, have you ever seen where you pull up a page and it's like, do you want to translate this to English? Because it's in like Korean or sure. Swedish or yeah. something. So you, you type in the brand's page and you're like, Oh, what Swedish? That's weird. I didn't think, okay, whatever. And, and so it's just like this, Hmm. Kind of a moment where you're like, I'm not sure what's going on here, but mm-hmm. okay. I can bite off on that as a consumer. Cool. I'll take that. So you, you translate to English and you're going through it and you're like, cool. And so you're like, oh man, I actually have this question. And you notice that there's a, a customer service number, 24 hours a day, call us anytime. We'll answer all your questions. You're like, sweet, really specific question. You give them a ring. And it's like some dude from Venezuela. Uh, right. I you're do. like, uh, so I looked at this computer in a Best Buy which ended up being a Swedish website. And now I'm talking to you in South America that throws up some major red flags and you lose trust. Right. And, and, so you've and, got to be building that trust. And, and I think, I mean, you're, you're, you're kind of giving like a pretty big, but we do that example. We do that as businesses all the time. And we just don't recognize it because it's not so blatant and that's not so obvious. And, and that's what I wanted to bring it back to. Thank you. I, appreciate I, 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 I wanted to just, you know, like you're, you're using the, these extreme examples to illustrate a point because what happens is businesses are always saying, well, I don't do that. Yeah. Right. And, and that's the problem. That's the mistake is we all do that. Yeah, there's been a moment where we all have changed something and it's not a big deal to us, but it's a big deal to our customers. You know, that's where we need to pay attention. And so as you're giving these extreme examples and you might be thinking, we're like, well, I don't have a call center that is international. And so that's, you know, how does that relate to me? And it's like, well, Look at what you did. Did you change? Uh, you know, did you did you change you, your whole branding, your campaign? So, is, like, is your is your messaging on your social media the same experience that your customer is going to have when they come into your store? Is that the same experience that they're going to have when they call you on the phone? Is that the same experience that they're going to have when they go to your website? All of these experience, and that's what I'm ultimately getting at. Like you're saying, I, I'm really glad you brought that in. It, the, all those experiences need to be the same. Well, so the crazy thing was, I was talking about, you know, the pantry. And yeah. while you were talking, I'm like, I want to look this up. I'm curious what COVID did to the pantry. Sure. Um, and so I, I, I got online and I pulled it up. And it was interesting because nowhere do they have that claim to fame anymore. So I'm guessing that, you know, somehow they didn't get to hold that, uh, you know, that that message of like, we've never been without a customer and their whole messaging has kind of changed, but it's not as cool anymore. It's like, it's just a, just another restaurant. It's an old diner. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, okay, maybe I, so I, I used to go out of my way to eat there Yeah, because of that brand promise of, and, Hey, we've never been without a customer. And, th- there and was you're like, so I, much, want, I want to take part in that. Yeah. There was so much personality behind this restaurant. And yeah. now when I got on their website and maybe that's the case, I don't know. But when I got on their website, the, you know, the instant feeling that I had was just old diner. I'm like, yeah. that's cool. You know, I still like old diners. They're fun. They're, they're, they're kind of classic, Yeah, but it's not, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to travel you know, a thousand miles to, Oh yeah. To go to just a classic place. So yeah, I just, I just pulled it up here on Google and, uh, according to the hours, it says that they're closed. They're only open Wednesday through Sunday, 7 AM to either 3 PM or 5 PM. Like that's a completely different, totally different message. And so I'm just like, Oh, maybe I don't want to do a shout out for them on my podcast (laughs) program. (laughs) Right. Well, it's, it's a totally, it's totally different than their original story. Yeah. Right, like the, the brand has changed. Yeah, and and so so on. That, so as your as as you as a consumer, that changes how you interact with them, mm-hmm. how you experience them, how you, whether you trust them or not. Ultimately, yeah. Right? So okay. okay, we've got this consistency. <laughs> we've we've got the trust. <laughs> well, I I know we've spent a lot of time on on this piece, but this is where I see a lot of mistakes because if you don't get the consistency piece down and you immediately move to frequency where it's just like, just get it out there, just get it out there. And I see businesses that want to do that. They're, you know, they, they get caught up in that social media rush and they're like, Oh, I just got to get it out there. And so, you know, if you don't have the consistency down and you immediately move to frequency, 
then all you're doing is just like randomly yelling at your customers. You're not. Which introduces an insane amount of confusion. Uh, right. <laughs> because you're yelling different messages. Mm-hmm. You got one guy yelling one thing and another guy yelling another thing. Oh, and, geez. Yeah. You know, there are other elements that play into both of these really consistency and frequency, right? Like, like we've alluded to, you have to get your messaging right, mm -hmm. right? You have to be in touch with your customer. You have to, you know, all these different things that we as entrepreneurs deal with on a regular basis. You, like you're saying, those are super important, but like, again, like you're saying these, like consistency is number one on this list of two items. Right. And I know it's not a long list, but it is hands down in my opinion, far and above any of the other advice that you're going to get on a blog or wherever else you're looking on the internet when you're trying to educate yourself on, on branding, right? And that's because if you're going to do 15 key points, you have to come up with 13 more things. I know. I don't want to do that. I'm lazy, man. <laughs> no, I actually put a ton of thought into this and I feel like it's, I don't know. Like, I feel like that's my knack of like simplifying things down to something that people can digest easily. Right. right? So, all right. Anyway, super weird tangent coming back to frequency. So, uh, or I guess not coming back, starting on frequency, <laughs> beginning on frequency. <laughs> Here we go. Um, frequency really is, uh, a simple concept similar to consistency. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit easier to grasp and implement. Um, frequency is just that you are, on a consistent cadence, like if you're listening to a song, it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, right. one, two, three, right? That's the same kind of a thing that you do with putting out your messaging, with uh, introducing your brand into the world. However you do that, whether that's through social media, whether that's the logo on your building, whether that's the sales flyer you give to your external reps or the swag that you give to your dealers or that's on your website or whatever, right? When, it, when, when we talk about this cadence, it's again, it's coming back to building something that people can expect and trust. So they, they're experiencing this on a regular basis and they know what to, they know what to expect. Now that again, that doesn't mean that you can't come out with like new stories, like, Oh, breaking news in our company yeah, kind of a but thing. But you got to tie it back in. Right. Exactly. It, it all comes back to, who you are as a company and why you do what you do as a company, right? Now, I want to tackle a couple things on frequency, uh, some, some things to avoid when you're getting into frequency. The first one that I want to tackle is this idea of, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm annoying my customers. I'm bombarding my customers. Mm -hmm. That's not I, true. I struggle with that bad. We all do because – and here's why. When you're putting your message out there, you're paying attention to every single time your message is out there. You notice yourself. You notice your ads. You notice that uh, you know, you're know you trying to push. You notice that you've emailed this person four times mm -hmm. already, and you're like, I can't email them again. But the truth of the matter is they haven't noticed. They're busy, yeah, and they're not thinking constantly about your brand. You are. And so you feel like you're being annoying. You feel like you're pressuring them. You feel like you're getting in the way. And honestly, think about this. How many times do you get bombarded with emails every single day? You probably get, what, I don't know, anywhere from a dozen up to, you know, 50. A hundred. Uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, depending on where you are and how yeah. public your email is. So you're getting bombarded with all these emails. And you're just kind of subconsciously like delete, 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 right? Yeah. Are you really super annoyed no, no. Well, and that's what I was going to get at is like, it's that classic mistake of, so like I said, like I struggle with this super bad, but something that's helped me a ton is coming to the realization of I'm making that classic mistake that salespeople and marketers make that I'm it will and, and small business owners and entrepreneurs at large that I'm approaching this as what I think or what I feel, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, and that's not what it's about. It's about our customer. So Get your own ego out of the way. Get your own bias out of the way and let your customer tell you what their experience is. Don't assume what their experience is because you're uncomfortable with it, right? And that's what I tell myself. It's like, 
no oh, man, I'm really just, I don't want to be intrusive or whatever. So I'm not going to send out that 17th email, but guess what? That's me projecting onto them what I think their experience is. And that's complete crap because they haven't told me what their experience is. Let so, them, let your customer tell you what their experience is. If they want you to stop, they'll tell you I'm, until I'm, then don't stop. Oh my gosh. I've, I've got a great story and it's not business, but it's, it's a, it's a <laughs> classic. Nice. My brother, it was his senior year in high school and uh, all of his friends were going to go to the senior prom. All right. And so they all went and they were finding dates, right? Well, he wasn't really dating anyone at the time. And so he's just thinking, he's like, I don't know, who am I going to ask? And so, you know, there's this girl that he wants to ask. So he asks her and she turns him down. She was already going with somebody. Sure. He asks another girl out, you know, and she turns him down. He goes through seven times. Yikes. <laughs> seven times. And finally this girl says Yes. They're married today, right? <laughs> and so we always joke about this ah, th this mm. story because, you know, he's like, oh, my gosh, I got rejected seven times. But to her, she didn't see the rejection. She just thought, oh, oh hey, yeah. I have this boy that I really don't because he's like, you know, scratching his head. He's like, who do I know? Come to find out it's some girl in his choir class. And he's like, I don't know if I've ever even really talked to her but maybe I could ask her, you know, like, like he just, he was trying to get a date to go with his friends to the yeah. senior prom. That, that was his goal. It was, yeah. you know, he wasn't looking for a serious relationship. He was just trying to find a date to the senior prom. And I look at that and I'm just like, you know, as businesses get rejected seven times, who cares? Yeah. You know, th that customer who says yes, they're just like, oh, this is exactly what I need. I've been looking for someone who has this product or I've been looking for someone who offers this service. They and don't care that you've been rejected seven times. So and you they shouldn't don't know. care. Yeah, they, they have don't know. no idea. Yeah. I mean, the most successful salespeople, they're rejected 10 times 50 times more than people say yes. They just don't care. They just move on to the next one, move on to the next one, move on to the next one. Yeah. You know, and so so anyway, kind of a kind of a funny story. I know it yeah. wasn't business related. No, it, it totally drives that the, point home. Though. Yeah, it's the same exact principle. So we definitely need to get wrapping this episode up, but I want to leave, I want to tie this back in, uh, make it a little bit more concrete. And I'm going to give an example of uh, a consulting agency that really f had, was struggling with this particular issue, their frequency in particular, okay. right? So they were really good about their core message. They had it dialed in. Um, what they were telling their consistency was on point. What they were telling their customers about who they were and why they were doing it was great. However, their consistency was horrendous. And <laughs> And at the time, it, I mean, looking back, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Looking mm -hmm. from an outside perspective, it's a lot easier to see things like that. But as I approached this business and was and was working with them, they didn't, they had no idea. They're like, we know people want this service. We know people need it. We've had people buy it. And when they buy it, they love it. But why, why can't we get more? Why aren't we getting more? Why are our, why are our marketing efforts not yielding? more results. Right. Mm -hmm. And as I went through this concept with them of frequency, they, it became clear that because they had, um, a few key individuals within their, in, within their organization turnover and kind of trade roles, right. You would see things on their social media and on their blog and on their website have this lack, complete lack of a pattern. It was like, there was this burst of social media posts or whatever. There was a few blog posts. There was a few updates to their website and then it would die off. Yeah. And you, I mean, you could tell these people were busy. It was like, you could, it, it was like, you could almost see when they would pick up, <laughs> pick up clientele. Um, and then when they would drop off again, because all of those things again would start to pick up, uh -huh. but that's a killer yeah. as a, as a small business for you being able to close that deal because it kills trust. When people look at that and they see that inconsistency, they, in their minds, question, why aren't people buying mm -hmm. in the same way that you're like, why aren't people buying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, again, when you start to develop that distrust or confusion, you're done for. So super important to make sure that that's something you're keeping tabs on. It can be different employees that, that handle that throughout different times, but 
make sure you as the owner, you as the entrepreneur, you as the manager of this endeavor that you're so heavily and heartfelt in heart feltedly <laughs> heart sure. feeling, heart feeling in this Lee <laughs> involved in <laughs> that, that you keep your finger on that pulse, right? It's, it's gotta be a pulse. It's gotta be consistent and frequent. And if you do that, you will crush it. So my invitation to you guys is to keep consistently listening to our podcast. Go ahead and subscribe and frequently tell all your friends how awesome it is. Yeah, Thanks for joining buddy. us. Take control of your business today. Go to learndesk.us and search marketing management and money for the small business insights you've always wanted. Be sure to stay tuned for new episodes on the first and third Wednesdays of every month and make sure to subscribe to be notified when we release bonus content such as interviews and short discussions. 